Today, I'm going to be giving you guys 10 tips that I wish I knew when I first started Infinity Kingdom. What's going on, guys? Cheers. We're drinking water today. You know, got to stay healthy. So I've been playing Infinity Kingdom for a couple of months now, and I compiled 10 tips that I think are going to be the most valuable for you if you are just starting. Now, later in the video, we're going to be obtaining the brand new Epic Immortal Himiko, so make sure you stick around for that. And without further ado, let's jump into the list, okay? Tip number one has to do with the market. Now, when you go into the market, you can see that there are two types of currencies you can use, either premium gem gems or you can use the purple soul gems now what's important to know is that when you make a purchase here for immortals you actually when you spend these purple soul gems you can purchase let's say this is 10 fragments of joan of arc right let's go back into the alchemy lab and what you'll find is that if we go ahead and we dismantle uh, 10 fragments of joan of arc we're going to get 500 just soul gems back, which means you actually get the exact same amount of soul gems back that you spent for these fragments inside of that market. So what does this mean? Well, not only is this going to help you with your daily quests, because every single day there's going to be a quest that uh, wants you to make five purchases in the market, but you might not need five things from the market any given day, right? So what you can do is you can just go through and for the, for 50 soul gems, you can buy whatever greens are over here or blues, and you can buy five of them. And then you can go over here to the alchemy lab and you can just dismount all of them and you get back all of the same soul gems for that so that's super important but even more important than that is that there is a growth a main quest growth mission for making market purchases you can see here this one i'm, I'm pretty far here it says buy 1750 items from the market and here you actually get some lord experience and you get some free gold as well you can make insane amount of progress on this particular main quest by just buying all of the purple soul gem immortals that you can get in here with your daily refresh chances and then going through and dismantling the ones that you don't need because again there's no downside to this you get exactly the same amount of gems that you spent tip number two has to do with your troop composition now you're going to notice that the top players in this game are using full teams of epic immortals and as a brand new player that's not going to be feasible for you it's going to take a bit of time for you to build up those armors Armies. So what you're going to notice is that you're going to be using more of the elite uh, immortals here in the game, such as Helen of Troy, right? Now, one thing you may be thinking is, let's say you have Helen of Troy. She's maxed out because you get her for free. When should you replace Helen of Troy with Yoshitsune, right? You may be able to unlock him pretty easily, but at one point, is he better than Helen of Troy? Now, the general rule of thumb is that you can replace a maxed out immortal with the higher rarity version of that immortal when it hits about five stars. Now, of course, my Yushitsune is fully maxed out in terms of his skill, but when he hit five stars, that would be generally the break even point or the point where he becomes slightly better than the maxed out Helen of Troy. And then once you get to the point where you're not going to use some of these blues or these greens or anything like that, even if you've invested a ton into them and ton of experience and a ton of skill ups with their fragments, you can actually go into the alchemy lab and you can reborn that immortal. So let's go over here to Velasco and you can see that when I reborn her I actually get back all the fragments that I've put into her I get back some of the gold and some of these resources that I've used to to kind of make her a little bit stronger so when I reborn her there is a cooldown timer right and then I get back her fragments and now you may be saying okay what good are her fragments well go into the lab here and you can get rid of all of the fragments and that gives you those soul gems and those soul gems you can then use uh, to purchase the fragments of the immortals that you are now working on so for example you, you know you get rid of all the fragments of your lancelot you convert them into soul gems and then you can use those soul gems to buy brin hills in the market so it's an easy way to sort of step up to the next level tip number three has to do with your dragons now dragons if i'm not mistaken are maxed out at level 30. so one thing to know is that it's not really worth bringing your dragons past level 25 until late game the reason for this is because the upgrade cost starts to become insanely high past 25 and what you'll notice is that 
all dragons have three skills the last skill is unlocked at 25. once you have all their skills unlocked you can domesticate those skills whenever you want whenever you have enough of the crystals for it but all levels beyond 25 aren't going to unlock new skills it's just going to increase the stats of that dragon which are important but again it's so expensive to do that that you might as well start upgrading the other dragons because eventually you're going to need them anyway and you're going to get more value out of the gold that you spend to upgrade the other dragons than it is to upgrade my water dragon for example to 26 i'm not going to get that much out of it tip number four comes in the form of your alliance shop now as you donate to alliance technology or you start to garrison alliance cities you're going to be getting these alliance contribution tokens now there's a lot of things that you can use these tokens on and i will encourage you to save these tokens the entire early game the entire mid game whenever you save them up until you get to alliance that is alliance level nine there's a lot of things in here that are good like the contract builder right this is a really great item for you especially if you're free to play but what i would recommend is try to avoid spending any of them until you're able to spend them on yoshitsune or space portals now Yoshitsune is already maxed for me. There's many ways that you can get Yoshitsune, but for free to play players, this may be the best and cheapest way to max him out, right? You can, you can hoard these nothing happens to them over time they just stockpile it, it is what it is uh and space portals the reason why you may want space portals is because these are very difficult to obtain and if you want to migrate to a server that's a little bit more active or if you want to migrate to my server for example or if you want to just play with some friends that are in a different server the space portal is the way to go and again if you're free to play that is going to be the way that you get them uh for for free without having to buy any bundles uh, you may want to invest a little bit into leonidas or frederick if you're going to build either earth or fire of course but i think most players at the beginning of the game are going to go water and yoshitsune is the best way to go here now tip number five this is a timeless tip no matter how old this video gets this tip is going to be good and relevant even as the meta changes okay so if you're a brand new player no matter when you're watching this video if you're curious to see what some of the best immortals are in the game and what the current meta is the way that you can do that is by going into the the arena go ahead and click on ranking and you can actually take a look at the top immortal compositions that people are using currently in your arena in your server now i would probably go through the top 10 or 20 players and see if there is a trend and we can see here that there's a lot of water a lot of fire and a lot of earth so that's going to give you guys sort of an idea as to what you should be working towards make sure you check this often to see how the game is changing tip number six is a really simple way to save market refreshes okay market refreshes are not free you do get some just by playing the game every single day but eventually you're going to run out okay now one way to save market refreshes is to not summon epic immortals that you don't think you're going to use for a while right which is what i've done here i'm still collecting these fragments uh eventually i'm going to probably use some of these immortals but once you summon an immortal there's a chance that they will show up here in the market so if you summon an immortal just randomly because you can they're going to start to show up here which is pointless because you're not going to use them for maybe months or a year or two years so why waste those market orders when something else could have shown up in that slot and it could be an immortal that you actually would use also when you summon epic immortals there is a bundle that shows up for that particular immortal so if you are a spender then it would be a good idea to just not summon them until you're ready to make that $15 purchase if it's a $15 purchase that you would be willing to make tip number seven comes in the form of how many troops you're going to need of each troop type so when we take a look here what you're going to notice is that you're always you're always going to need more bowmen than anything else and the reason for that is because when you take a look at your troop composition these first two portions here these first this first front row uh can either be uh spearmen shieldsmen or cavalry the back row can only ever be bowmen there's no other choice for this back row so if you're going to train a ton of troops and you're not sure which ones to do just check and see how many bowmen you have if you have the same amount of bowmen as every other troop type it's time to train more because you're going to need more when it comes to the other troops you can just look at your main march right i have attila who's cavalry i have ramses who's spearmen so shieldmen i don't really need for my main march now there's other marches that i have that do use shieldmen so it's important that i have some of them but you can see here that i have a majority of my troops 
are going to be these troop types and the reason uh, by the way if you didn't notice uh, there's a cap on the number of troops that you can have in your city for me it's 440,000. so there's no point in evenly distributing that 440,000 when you're going to need more bowmen and i'm going to need less shieldmen you might as well train them in that proportion i think we're on tip number eight at this point and it's going to be in the tower of knowledge when you go in here and you tap learn you're going to be able to unlock some of these skills for your immortals for a particular amount of soul gems and it actually costs quite a bit of gems just to unlock these skills and then beyond that it's actually not as expensive to level them up eventually it will get more expensive but the first couple of levels are much cheaper than the initial unlock cost but the tip i want to leave you with is to not unlock skills that you're not really sure that you're going to use because you can't get the initial unlock value back so for example this skill called support costs 2000 gems now let's say for example this hold fast skill i'm not i don't want to use it anymore right you can actually reset it and you get 80 percent of your soul crystals back however it doesn't lock that skill meaning it just goes back to one so you don't actually get back the crystals that you spent to unlock that skill so what i'm trying to say is that you can sort of undo any progress on a skill that you find is just a bad skill or it's not the meta or you don't need it anymore you can get most of those crystals back and it's not too big of a deal but you can't get back the crystals for unlocking a skill you're never going to use so if you go in here and you just start unlocking a ton of different skills that you're not going to use you can't get those crystals back it's gone so just be very careful as to which ones you unlock just make sure that they're decent and that you're going to get use out of them tip number nine has to do with upgrading your troop training buildings now every time that you go uh, 10 levels with a troop training building you unlock the next tier of that unit so the game starts you have tier one units when you unlock your bowman barracks level 10 you get tier two units and the way that the game does it is it just converts all of your tier one bowmen into tier two bowmen so the tip for you is that when you're upgrading these barracks you want to make sure that your training ground is absolutely filled to the brim because it doesn't when it converts all those units it doesn't cost you anything you get a ton of a higher rarity unit at no additional cost however it does cost more to train and heal the higher tier of units so you might as well get as many of those units for free as you can because in order to replace them later it's going to cost you more tip number 10 has to do with immortal equipment okay and the equipment system there's a ton of different rarities not only is there elite but there's also elite plus right what are these pluses should you bother with the plus it's like an in-between rarity like should you bother with that guys it's it's very simple they've made it incredibly simple and the rule of thumb is always upgrade to the highest tier and always dismantle the old piece if you have no use for it the reason is because you can come into the alchemy lab and you can actually dismantle a piece of equipment and you will always get back the same number and number of enchant stones as it would take to get the new piece of equipment to that same level so for example if we're looking at Brynhild here and we take a look at her frantic armor chest plate uh, you can see that this level 15 frantic armor it would actually cost the same amount to get this lower rarity uh, frantic armor to 15 as it does here so again if you have this at 15 and you just suddenly obtain a, an elite plus you can dismantle this and immediately get the elite plus to the same exact level so it's just a free buff it's a free boost you might as well do it and i've noticed uh, depending on the piece of equipment you're going to get anywhere from a two to ten percent increase in stats by going from an elite to an elite plus so again it's free stats just dismantle the old one if you have no use for it and you'll be good to go ladies and gentlemen the moment you have been waiting for today we're going to be obtaining the new epic immortal himiko and i am super excited just look at her her model looks incredible she looks like a literal goddess of darkness itself but before we get into any statistics let's allow himiko to introduce herself all right let's take a look here we got spooky got some ninja action looks absolutely beautiful by the way Got the cherry blossom trees. Okay, what are we doing? There she is. Unfazed, unprotected, meditating. Y'all, Yo, you thought you could just hit her with shurikens. You just, you thought. Oh my god, he run. Look at her! She sends him flying! He had the, he had the audacity to rush her. Dude, this is a whole army. There's like, there's like 20 of them there. Yo. No way. That is so 
He he knew he messed up. Yo, dude. That is so sick. She's just killing them with shadow energy. And she's laughing about it. She's like, you thought your whole army could take me out. Like, you really thought you could do that. It's like she's ripping the souls out of their bodies. Look, did, she's unfazed. Didn't break a sweat. No big deal. It, it is what it is. You're all dead now. There she is, Himiko, the shamanist queen of Yamatai. You got to admit, that was that was sick, okay? That was sick. If that doesn't get you excited to get her in game, I don't know what will. Okay, now the way you're going to get her is by spinning Thea's roulette. You do need to have some tickets in order to spin this wheel. You do get some free spins, though, and it's around for, I believe, three days, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel the first time. We get 500,000 food, just food. It is what it is. Now, as you spin this wheel, okay, and you reach these milestones, you're going to get fragments of her just by just by spinning the appropriate amount of times. Now, you can see Siegfried is on the wheel right now. We're going to try and refresh it and see if we can get... There she is. Himiko. Okay, she's on here. We're going to spin now. Let's see how it goes, boys. Let's see how it goes. We're going to do five spins. We're going to see what we can get. I'm hoping that we get a ton of her. I want to get as many fragments of her as I can because she looks really good. So here we get... Five hours of training speed ups, six hours of universal, some resources, nothing that exciting there. So let's go ahead and spin it five more times. We'll see what shows up on the wheel. We are going to get, uh, what did we get here? We got a bunch of experience. Okay, we got 10 med B. Uh, she's actually an immortal that I do have to work more on. And I think she's going to pair really well with Himiko in the back row. So that's good. Uh, stuff we're going to use here is great. Uh, let's keep spinning. We're going to see what we can get. We haven't gotten any fragments of her so far. We've Got more med B guaranteed, and there it is. We didn't wait. No, we didn't get her. Oh, I thought this was lighting up over here. Okay, uh, we got what is this? We got a hundred shadow dragon crystals, so that's gonna be really useful. I don't have the shadow dragon yet, my VIP is not high enough but that will come in handy later down the line. Let's continue spinning here. Hopefully one day I'll have the shadow dragon. I feel like I'm pretty far away, but regardless, let's go ahead and continue to spin. What did we get this time? We got more resources, more med B. Man, we are just getting super unlucky. The next five spin has got to have it, right? Uh, it only looks like there's four things left. What's going to happen if we if we do a five spot? What's going to what what am I what's going to pop up here? We got we got okay, so we got 10 fragments of Himiko, so that's good. We got 10 fragments of Med B. Beautiful. Okay. Now it refreshes and she's back. So that's good to know if you're spinning a uh, Thea's roulette, just know that as long as you don't refresh the wheel, as you continue to spin, you're guaranteed to get everything that's on that wheel at least once. So that is good. Let's keep spinning here. We get, we need at least 60 to summon her, which is going to be really exciting. One eternity later. Let's go ahead and see how many of Himiko we actually have in the vault here we can summon her officially there she is we have 280 himiko fragments absolutely incredible let's go ahead and summon her boom she oh look at that moon in the background this animation is beautiful she is just like the puppeteer of death dude she looks so good and that staff reminds me of uh, legend of zilla twilight princess i don't know what it is i don't know if it's just that logo or whatever the colors but it just looks super good um now if we go if we back out okay so there's not a bundle there's not a bundle that pops up for himiko so if you guys were curious to know that is not possible so let's take a look at her skill here because this is i mean as beautiful as she is right you're getting her for her power and it's called demon ambush and that's what i think is on her little headpiece here that looks like a demon to me it says inflicts magical damage with a damage rate of 229.5 percent to all enemy units if the number of targets is more than two which the first few times this goes off it's gonna be more than two the enormous energy will rip open the space and pulls the unit with highest troop number into the void while in the void enemy cannot attack or use spells nor be targeted by any normal attack or spell for six seconds so okay so there is a little uh, a give and take here right okay so first off you're dealing a ton let me let me just look at hang on let's look at merlin for a second just to compare with another immortal of the same caliber okay so in, so merlin at base has 265.2 percent damage to all enemies and 50 percent increased damage if they're chilled so huge aoe on merlin right if we look at himiko she is dealing less damage than him but on top of that it looks like this is going to be a debuff when it goes into this void so whoever has the most amount of troops on the enemy side 
that particular immortal is not going to be able to do anything for six seconds but they also don't take damage for that six seconds so a little bit of give and take there let's see how many uh, skills we can add on her so let's develop that first skill boys and girls oof boosting that damage absolutely beautiful let's put that second skill on her easy peasy can we get that third skill we can we are just shy we are just shy of the fourth uh, skill up for her. So we can actually add a skill to her, which is exciting. When it comes to determining what skills you should add to any particular immortal, it's important that you take a look at their stats, right? Because when you look at Himiko, right, uh, it looks like her damage is mostly magical attack. Now, just by looking through everything here, I think concentration is going to be a really solid choice for Himiko because it doesn't require any probability, any chances, no special proccing or debuffs or anything. It just straight up gives you more magical damage, which is basically min maxing what she's good at. So let's equip concentration here to Himiko and we're actually going to bring her up to probably about level 15. Dude, that, that is a beautiful byproduct of this video. We have absolutely maxed out med B. She is going to be a beautiful pair for Himiko. No question. And now let's build an army with Himiko. Okay. So this was the best troop composition that I could come up with incorporating Himiko and Medby in the back row. And that's because my fire dragon was my third most powerful dragon. So I figured it was time to put him on the battlefield. So we've got Frederick up front. He is sort of tanky, right? He's dealing physical damage and he's healing, which is nice. So having him in front of Himiko is going to be good. So he could absorb that damage over here. We have William who increases the probability of getting a crit and the fire dragons. Second skill here gives you uh, increased crit damage. So there's some synergy there with William, which is absolutely beautiful. And then the back row is Med B and Himiko. Those are going to be the straight damage dealers. They're just going to be nuking everything. And that's where probably almost all the damage is going to come from to all enemy units. Uh, Med B is only three enemy units, which is, it is what it is, but uh, they're going to take increased damage from Himiko when Med B goes off. So there's a lot to love about this combination. I'm, I'm obsessed, right? So let's see how this looks on the battlefield. All right. We're going to challenge seven dash six burning enemies because the recommended power is slightly higher than what we have here for this army so let's see if it's powerful enough to take it down anyway so what we're going to do here it looks like there's going to be two waves of enemies so we're going to uh actually turn off auto battle and we're going to see if we can save the shadow immortals for the second round let's use the true damage from the fire dragon to take out a ton of enemies there again we're going to save these two we're going to hit them with the fire immortals next and it looks like they didn't do too much damage up here. You could see the HP didn't really move too much. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the second skill from the fire dragon. Uh, not, let's actually slow this down. We're going to use the second skill from the fire dragon. So that way, if we get a crit here, it's going to deal crazy damage. Med B actually is going to increase the uh, magical damage that we deal from Himiko. And we see an absolute, it looks like the moon fell on the enemies there. Super cool looking. This, this shadow energy balls just looks so cool in uh, in battle it's just it's actually insane we're gonna be able to use uh, med b again and, and again guys you want to time these um these immortal activations at the same time i was a little bit uh, a little bit too early there but dude that it's an absolute nuke that just hits the battlefield and you could see that debuff that shadow debuff it looks like it was on one of these two i believe um so let's go ahead and use the fire immortals med b is just gonna deal some crazy uh roses oh did i just said there were hearts it looks like they're actually roses that she's dealing damage with super cool um we need him it's actually it looks like her energy regen is pretty slow so when looking for skills maybe uh if there's a skill that we can get to sort of get her to regenerate energy faster i haven't looked at all the skills in depth that maybe there's one later down the line that will give her that ability um but yeah we get some nice experience here and we were able to take out um, a stage that was actually uh, requires a little more power and it was pretty straightforward honestly i love everything about her her design her sort of lore behind her being like this this uh shadow queen is super cool super cool love the animations and she seems like she's going to be really powerful for shadow marches especially in late game when you have the shadow dragon med be all that stuff it's going to be absolutely beautiful guys if you enjoyed this video if you found it entertaining useful or informative or anything like that make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other infinity kingdom players might see it of course if you're new around here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload an infinity kingdom video 
all my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram facebook twitter discord all that stuff it's always down there and if you're new to infinity kingdom you haven't tried it out yet there's a link down in the description to download infinity kingdom absolutely for free try it out guys i absolutely am loving this game and they're constantly adding huge updates with amazing immortals just like himiko very very frequently comment down below what do you think of her do you think she's super powerful do you think that her her lore and style is awesome i would love to hear from you guys down there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace